Hey photographers, the Nikon Z7 delivers 45 megapixels of full frame photo goodness. So you want to make sure your photos are sharp. Let me walk you through all of the focus settings. We'll start with easy and work our way up to best. And then I'll show you how to focus manually and finally go over focus shift, bracketing and stacking. Now this is the Z7 with the 24 to 70 kit lens. There's only one switch on the lens, auto or manual focus. Make sure it's on A. The easiest focus tool is touch. On the left side of the screen, press the touch button until the screen says touch AF on. And if you want tap and snap, select touch shutter AF on. The Z7 will focus where you touch and with touch shutter, take the photo when you remove your finger or leave it on focus only and press the shutter button. Whichever you choose, by default, the camera will only take a photo when it can focus on an object. I'll show you how to override that in a minute. If you prefer to shoot with the viewfinder, the Z7 has two focus controls, when the camera focuses and where it focuses. Of course, all of these controls work when you're shooting with the LCD also. When you put your eye to the viewfinder, pull out the dial beside and adjust the diopter to your prescription. I use the menu so I can tell when it's perfectly sharp. Then press I and the I menu appears. Both focus controls are on the far right. Bottom right is mode, that's the when. Single focuses once and is useful for most situations. Soft press the shutter or the AF button, and the focus area turns green to show what's in focus. And then there are five wear options. With auto area, the Z7 selects the most likely object. That's usually the object closest to the camera. One or more green rectangles light up. The red bounding area shows the limits of the auto focus. The remaining four options provide various sizes for a selectable focus area. These can all be positioned, most easily using the focus joystick, but touch works here also. After you've moved the focus area, press OK to return it to center. This is the size for a wide large. It can be moved on a 7x7 grid. The size for a wide small is smaller and covers a 27 by 15 grid. Single point is smaller again, but as a result, much more accurate to focus on a subject's eye, for example. The larger the aperture, the more you want to make the focus point as accurate as you can. The grid for single point is 29 by 17, or 493 points. And pinpoint is smaller still, and doesn't focus quite as fast as single point. I didn't bother to count the grid here. My preferred setting is single autofocus with single point AF, and mostly I leave the point in the center, soft press to focus, hold the soft press to compose the image, and snap when I've got the shot. The alternate to holding the soft press is to press the joystick. That also locks focus and exposure. And if my subject is predictably off-center, I'll move the focus spot as needed. Custom setting A5 can make focus point navigation faster by skipping over every other point. And A9 can wrap the focus point selection. So when you get to the top, bottom, or sides, the cursor skips around to the other side. Use custom setting A8 to limit the number of area selections. And if you're frequently changing the area size, assign focus area to one of the function buttons. Then, when you press the button, as displayed in yellow on the right, the front dial can be used to change the area, the back dial, the mode. And by default, A4, face detection, is on. However, it works only with auto area mode. The AF on key is an alternate to using the shutter soft press to focus, before you snap with the shutter. Incidentally, use A7 to disable the shutter focus interconnect. This technique, which is helpful if you don't need the camera to focus with each shutter press, is called back focus. With auto area, you may notice the OK crosshairs button. Press OK, and a square appears which can track objects. This square can be moved on an 8x9 grid in the center of the screen. 
Now, while it's excellent at tracking, the Z7 still requires you to press the shutter to focus, which is good for shooting in burst mode. In addition to single, there is continuous focus mode. Once activated, I'd expect that to focus on a selected subject, but as with single, you'll have to hold down the shutter or AF on button to focus. Now there's no green in focus indication in continuous, and no pinpoint, but a new selection, dynamic area autofocus, is added. In this mode, the area will expand when the subject leaves. The custom setting A3 controls the speed of refocus after a subject is locked on. Quick adjusts focus immediately when a subject appears. Delayed isn't as fast to change focus. If you don't want the Z7 to release until it's in focus, change the continuous setting A1 to focus. That may slow your burst but will improve your focus. I thought maybe the green focus indication would appear with this setting, but no. Custom setting A11 improves, but slows autofocus in low light situations, and A12 can disable the green autofocus assist illuminator. Manual focus is useful when you're maintaining a constant distance to your subject and don't need the camera to refocus for every shot. And it's also good to stop focus from wandering or adjusting while shooting video. I recommend you use the menu to switch it on. In manual focus mode, turn the lens's focus ring. A distance ruler appears, and the arrow's bottom left will assist you. The white spot indicates you have focus, and the focus area will turn green. If you need more assistance, use the zoom keys for an expanded view, or punch in. The custom setting D10 provides peaking highlights, with three levels of sensitivity and four color options. The colored outline indicates the edges of the object which is in focus. Now, this can be distracting, so best to assign this feature to a custom button to easily turn it on and off. Switching to video provides one more focus mode, full-time autofocus. Although not speedy, it will focus to the position of the focus point. You can speed this up with a soft press on the shutter as well as G4 and G5, two video-specific adjustments to the autofocus speed and the tracking sensitivity. G4 controls how quickly the focus switches or racks, with a setting that engages only while recording. G5 controls the response to changes. That to rack focus from one subject to another, touch is simple and provides good results. Small objects, particularly at large apertures, can be notoriously difficult to focus. While it's not a technique that works for situations with movement, focus bracketing or focus shift shooting changes the focus slightly as multiple images are taken. Useful options include creating a new folder for the images. Now, it requires a bit of trial and error to find the right number of shots and an appropriate step width to capture what you need. In this situation, I found 12 shots taken with a step width of 10 to cover the yellow submarine. The sequence starts from the menu, and after preparing, the screen is black while the images are taken. You can either choose the image that suits you best, or take them into Photoshop to create a focus stack to bring the entire object into focus. You'll find plenty of tutorials to show you how. There are a few things the Z7 doesn't do. There's no touchpad option to use the LCD screen as a focus point selector when shooting with the viewfinder. And the Z7's face detect doesn't include eye detect, nor does the AF on button have a face or eye detect specific option. And the competition does offer those features. Well, I think that covers it. If you want more information about the Z7, I've included a link to my full and detailed review below. And I've also posted a video detailing the best settings for shooting video. If you have more questions, I do enjoy interacting with you, so post your relevant questions and civil comments below. And then go out and shoot until your memory card is full and your battery is empty. And if this channel and my content pleases you, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Thank you.